which teams do you think should come out and go for it and do it and and figure out this Rubik's Cube in the manner that the Ravens couldn't, that maybe Lamar gives them uh, an idea uh, of what he said no to and what the Ravens were causing him to say no to, and you, they can figure it out. Which teams do you think should go for it? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I believe Atlanta has already said no. Mm. But that would be absolutely freaking perfect. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the system that Arthur runs down there, Arthur Smith, is perfect for Lamar. Mm. Oh, my God. It's perfect. A run-centric now, I'm not talking quarterback run centric. A running back run centric, 12 personnel, 13 personnel on first and second down, multiple tight ends. I mean, we, we, I think people know, you know what, what we're talking about here. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, one tight – I mean, three tight ends, one wide receiver, where they love to smash the football, get the quarterback out on the perimeter off a of play action, easy throws over the middle, deep shots down the outside because you're pounding people, getting eight people in the box, getting one-on-one coverage – that's that's and then when you need him to maybe say hey look i need you to give us some of that magic now so now we're going to run quarterback boot we're going to run a keeper and we're going to need you to take off now we're going to run quarterback power down here on the goal line like ryan Tannehill used to do when arthur Smith was calling plays in tennessee and we're going to be what the most deadliest offense in the red zone in the nfl with you because we add that extra component of your legs to the to the to the game plan are you kidding he'd be perfect there but they're not interested. Washington. Look at the weapons that are right. in Washington. No doubt. No oh. doubt. I mean, the guys on the perimeter. I mean, Lamar is like saying, why can't I have some of that? Why can't I have some of those guys? Right. Something like a Terry McLaurin. Why can't I have, you know, that that kind of person to be able to, in Jahan Dotson, I'm just sitting here, I'm drawing a book no, on the name. No, Samuel, of but, all, yeah, exactly. all of them, man. Oh, why yeah. Why can't I have those kind of dudes? Fast. And why can't we construct a run-heavy 12, 13, 11 personnel, L, even even regular 21 personnel type of offense to where Lamar's under center. They got Robinson Jr. Gun. Oh, yeah, Robinson Jr. And, and the rest of that team. I love That's- I love those ideas. It's just that, that you're going to need, uh, I think, Arthur Blank to, to go on. We had Thomas Dimitrov on the other day, Lewis. And he's yeah. like, you know, his his read of the situation was there used to be a guy there who put him in cap hell and they're just out of it, you know, referring to himself. Yeah. Um, and, and that they kind of, you know, dig that they're not on the hook for a gajillion dollars to a quarterback and that they're finally through that. And he thought it was Arthur Smith saying essentially, yeah, no, that let's just stick with the plan. That will require yeah. Arthur Blank to come in a room and say, we're changing pace. Let's call the Ravens yeah. today, everybody, yeah, you know. right. You know, and I, and I and I and I get that I get that business part of it, Rich. And, I, and I'll tell you what it's, and you touched on this already. It's not so much what it makes you do from a cap standpoint, because there are some really really smart guys that are in charge of keeping teams cap compliant that can figure out how to keep you cap compliant and yeah. still allow you to add materially to your roster every year. There's teams that are doing it every year that we sit there and go, how the hell are they doing that? This is a cash flow issue. That's what you. That's what we're talking about. Right? Yeah, we're yeah. talking about putting a large amount of money into escrow and saying, "Hey, look, we're good for it. We're good for this money that we're guaranteeing this young man." And yeah, I can totally get with Dimitrov's assertion that guys aren't the owners aren't really that that keen on, on that. Saying, "Hey, look, I'm <laughs> yeah. going to write that check for two hundred million You're and scratch it. Yeah, I'm good for it." Yeah. I'll yeah. scratch it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I get that part of it. Right. And there, there may be some owners who say, I don't have it. I don't have it. I'm not doing it. I can't do it even if I wanted to do it. <laughs> so, you know, it's, yeah, this, this Deshaun Watson thing has truly, yeah, it has truly thrown a monkey wrench into everything. And, I, and I'll tell you what, too, I, I'm sure there are people going, well, you know what? I'm, I'm sure there are teams right now that have some franchise quarterbacks coming up for uh, contract negotiations or renegotiations and, and extensions going. Man, I damn sure hope Baltimore doesn't cave because can you just only imagine what the next contract will look like for Joe Burrow? Well, I mean, and maybe maybe, maybe that's to. what what the Ravens are are waiting on too is Burrow go first, Herbert go first. Those two guys. Let's see what contracts they accept 
compared to what the Browns are going to accept. And then maybe somebody can backfill with Lamar or that's that will help read the right. market for Lamar. I have two minutes left. What do you think DaCosta does? What's his plan? What, what do you think he's doing? I, I, I think there, there's definitely I, – I think there there has to be discussion about, you know, how do we move him? Mm. How could we move him? I mean, there, there has to be. Because right now, look, they're trying to implement a new system, right? They're trying to change their offense around a little, have it be a little bit more conventional, a little bit more, you know, use of traditional personnel, have the structure of it look a lot more – conventional as far as the quarterback and his responsibilities are concerned and they need to get going with that the longer it takes here in the offseason whether it's Lamar being your quarterback or them trying to figure out who the next guy is going to be and acquiring him the more this puts you behind the eight ball as this just kind of like lingers out there you have to get going on business and I know I'm one of the people who say all the time we don't play games until September but look time is ticking it's almost April the draft is only a couple weeks away and I'll see you down there in Kansas City by the way and that, look, it's time to get going. You can't have this kind of thing just hovering over this organization. So I think, I think if I'm Eric Acosta, if I'm Ozzie Newsom, if I'm Steve Bashotti, if I'm Coach Harbaugh, I'm sitting there going, okay, look, man, we, we, may, need, we may need to start thinking, look, this is just not going to work. What, can we recoup what we deem to be fair value in terms of compensation for him? And can we move him on his way? Because they know him better than anybody. They know if he's bluffing or if he's serious about the fact he wants to get out of there. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.